Welcome to part 2 on the VE301W receiver. I'm going to start off with a description of the circuit just to give you an idea of how this thing works. As you can see it's pretty simple, it's got three valves. A triode, is this little fella here. An output pentode, not a tetrode as I originally thought, or said I should say. This is this little fella here, if it'll focus. You can see the three grids. Come on. There you go. I reckon that's the prettiest of the three. There's the plate on the outside. And finally, the half wave rectifier, which is that little fella right there. Um, it's pretty much a simple grid leak biased regenerative receiver. You can see the um, first triode in the grid leak configuration with a large resistor small capacitor in parallel going to the tuning coil with a parallel tuning capacitor the um, regeneration coil is taken from the plate you can see there with a small variable resistor to control the amount of regeneration from the plate it goes into an interstage transformer with a rather small capacitor to ground to um, bypass some of the RF so it doesn't go into the transformer, out of the transformer into the pentode which acts as the output going to a high impedance speaker so there's a little halfway rectifier with a couple of teeny tiny well I'm sure they were big for the time capacitors for getting as little ripple as possible apparently this thing hums like a right bugger but you know for the 30s and for something relatively cheap at the time it would do the trick now one of the first things I'm going to do is to make sure that interstage transformer is all intact as you can see from the plate connection of the triode go through the transformer through a 50k resistor where does it go to? through the... yeah that way that's better alright let's start that again plate of the triode through the transformer 50k resistor through the speaker which has a resistance of about 2k to the plate of the pentode so I expect to see about I don't know about 50 something k all up from there to check the secondary my hand will stop shaking grid of the pentode through the transformer through 2.2 meg to the plate of the rectifier that's the word I'm looking for so between those two points I expect to see about 2 point something meg alright let's test that theory out and see what we get alright here it is I'm testing out the um, primary winding plate of the triode plate of the pentode see plate. there you go expecting to see about 50k 50 something k as I previously mentioned we have got 58.5 right time to check out the secondary by hooking it up from the grid of the pentode to the plate of the rectifier all right here we are grid of the pentode plate connection of the rectifier grid of the pentode zoom through the secondary 2 meg to the plate we expect to see 2 point something meg 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 and we do so the good news is the interstage transformer is all hunky dory okay another couple of sanity tests I've got to check out is to see if those secondaries on the power transformer are all good one way is to use any of the taps on the um, filament of the halfway rectifier and go to the plate of the of the triode as you can see it goes through that transformer through 50k through 3k to there so I've did done that you can see over there and I'm getting 60 something K as expected now I'm not sure which tap I got on that that one or that one so I'm just gonna pop the probes just across the heater of 
the rectifier, so just lean that in there, and I'm getting continuity, so that's a bonus. Uh, let's check the heater winding for the triode and the pentode. That would be by putting it there and there, and we get very little resistance as respected as expected. I think I'm due for a coffee. I'm going to stop this by the time um, you come to the next scene. I'd have had my coffee back soon. Alright, next step is to check whether all those coils are intact. The antenna coil, this one and this one. So I've got to set to continuity, so you should hear a beep every time I do that. Yes, yeah, so there's one, there's two. Doing this with my left hand is not as easy as it looks. Alright, all taps are good. Next, alright, let's check that one there, this one, well, let me actually point to what I'm doing. Okay, from that point there to ground, so I should touch the tuning capacitor. So if I can just get in there and we have success. All right. This is all right, isn't it? Okay, what am I going to check next? Or should I just pull this thing apart? Meh. I know. I'm going to check the primary of that transformer. So pardon me while I swap things around. Put my hand in the way and try and... <coughs> there we go. All right, pop that there, kind of, uh, that's looking a bit flimsy. You know, humans should be born with a third arm. Let's have a look. One second, let's pop that on resistance. There we go, about a hundred or so ohms. Primary's good. Right, time to pull this little fella apart. Here we go. Actually, it just occurred to me before I pull this thing apart, and probably to make up for all that fumbling that I just did, let's have a look what's actually inside here. We didn't have a chance to show this off. There's the actual antenna and regeneration coils and whatnot. Interstage transformer in the foreground. Tuning capacitor, which looks a bit too new, very new, looks like it's been replaced. AC transformer, there's a good reason they put backs on these things, because I wouldn't want to be sticking my fingers right there and there and there and there when this thing's on. Because if anyone's had a shock from the mains, it really sucks. And we've got a high impedance um, speaker, with this lovely baby blue horseshoe magnet. Now that speaker coil measures about 2k um, DC in resistance, but we already know that's good because we um, measured from that point down to that point, or was it that point? Anyway, we measured through there and it wasn't an open circuit, so everything's hunky-dory. Just another look at that speaker. For its horrible past, it is pretty good to look at. But anyway, let's open this little fella up and have a look inside. Alright, things are getting a bit noisy under the veranda thanks to the rain that just started coming down. Um, but here's a bit of a view on the inside. Obviously someone's been in here before. Because uh, all those connections there on that capacitor block are new. Looks like those tabs are being folded. Oh, and the obvious thing, the new power cord. Now, um, I didn't put this on video because I needed two hands to do this, but I measured the capacitances there. And they work out rather well, so I'm pretty confident that 
things are pretty good. I know the seller already told me that he turned it on, got nothing but hum out of it. So, you know, no magic smoke. At least I hope not. Maybe he didn't know how to actually hook up an antenna to these things, but anyway. First things first, I'm going to replace this dodgy switch. I may get a, I may get a proper genuine replacement at some point, but I um, got this one here, which uses the exact same hole mounting. These are usually found in Fender amplifiers, guitar amps and such. So um, I'm going to do kill two birds with one stone as I'm going to be um, removing this power cord. Let me start that again. I'm going to be replacing this switch anyway. I may as well replace this power cord with an Australian one. So, see what happens, eh? Alright, I've taken the chassis out. Not only just to show it off. You can see coil, tuner, power transformer, interstate transformer. But yeah, the reason I took it out was mainly because I noticed something as I was fiddling around. One wire appeared to be rather loose and there it is. The wire from the tuning coil. No wonder the thing was not tuning any stations. So I'm going to have to do something about that and also while it was out change the power connector. So I'm going to put it back in the chassis and, well actually no, first I'm going to solder that wire back on, put it in the chassis and then test it out and hope for the best. See you soon. Hear that hum? Seems to be pretty standard for these things. I remember that loose wire I was telling you about. Soldered it. Plugged in the power. Things are promising. And then... Yep, it works. No volume control, you've got to actually reduce the amount of regeneration. Yeah. Seems to work fine. Long way in Australia, absolutely nothing. So, um, all I really got to do is clean this crap over here. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Where are those little things? Where are they? Oh yeah. When I received this radio, it actually had two stickers, these things here. Stuck on the front. One on this side and one on the other. So I um just get off the station there. So I peeled them off and had to sort of get in there with some Methylated spirits and crap and trying to remove as much of that glue as possible. I say as possible because I haven't removed all of it, but oh well, the lease is now electrically sound. Take it back to where it was a couple of days ago. And that and that is your great gift. Here now. Mm. There you go. Guess I don't have to make another video now. Only two parts. Somewhat disappointing, but at least you know, here we are. Easier fix than anticipated. All it really took was one wire. There you go. See ya.